In this season, our third season, we'll be looking at one of China's very recent feats of engineering expertise, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. The story focuses on how the chief engineer saw his project not simply in terms of a construction challenge, but also saw its aesthetics and its spirit harking back to some of the great bridge-building feats of distant ancestors. Now, talking of ancient feats of engineering, we also have a story about the Great Wall and its construction at its far western end at Jiayuguan. Workers were faced with the challenge of moving massive blocks of stone from a quarry to the building site. Listen on to hear how they overcame the challenge. We have stories about the power of music during wartime, the 19-year bitter exile of a Han Dynasty official, and a traditional story about the virtues of self-control. All of that and also a story about the Dragon Boat Festival. So join us, expand your vocabulary, rediscover inspiring Chinese stories, and learn how to share them with foreign friends and with the whole world. Gang 面临一个巨大的挑战，那就是如何将巨大的石块从采石场运到施工现场。通过这个故事，我们可以学习到他们是如何克服这个困难。除此之外，我们还要战争时期用音乐鼓舞人民的故事，还有关于汉代官员十九
你是否把人民的利益置于自己的利益之上？尽管这样有时候会给你带来暂时的困难和窘迫，但是从长远来看，这才是赢得百姓的爱戴。更广泛的说，纪念屈原是一种。更基本的中国文化象征，即对祖先的尊重。这就是为什么我们这个故事一开始提到良渚文化考古发现，比屈原还早两千多年，表明祖先崇拜可以追溯到更早的时期。好。我现在来用这本书，就是我们用英语讲中国故事基础记的书的关于屈原和端午节的故事的英文版来进行朗诵。This is a jade vessel carved with dragon patterns. The body of the vessel is simply carved in the shape of a flood dragon, displaying great skill. It was excavated from the complex of ruins of the Liangzhu culture in the area of the ancient kingdoms of Wu and Yue, on the lower reaches of the Yangtze River. The jade carving on this vessel is of the highest standard, and it is a silent witness to the frequent scenes of ancestor worship among the ancient people, who are generally referred to as the people of ancient Yue. These people shaved off their hair and tattooed their bodies. They called themselves the descendants of the dragon. On the fifth day of the fifth month, by the lunar calendar, the ancient Yue people used to hold dragon boat races, which was a large-scale ceremony on the water, expressing their respect for their ancestors through boat races and the keen, enterprising spirit of the descendants of the dragon. Teams of several men each would row a boat. Decorated with water plants and carved in the shape of a dragon, which is why the local people called them dragon boats. Following a blaring of musical instruments, the competition would begin. The placid river would be suddenly transformed into a riot of splashing as the members of each team plied their oars in unison, in time with a drummer in the prow, as each crew strove to be first across the finishing line. None of the competitors felt tired, as they all felt that the race was a dialogue with the spirits and an invocation to their ancestors. As time passed, the dragon boat races on the fifth day of the fifth month gradually became an indispensable annual custom for the people of ancient Yue, a day of celebration for the whole tribe, high and low, the Dragon Boat Festival. By the time of the Warring States period, 475 to 221 BC, a medium power state grew up on the Jing River. It was called Chu. A Chu high-ranking official, Chu Yuan, recommended talented people and laws for internal government and an alliance against the powerful kingdom of Qin as Chu's foreign policy. He was a man of rare talent in Chu. But his forceful advocacy met with rejection from the Chu aristocracy, and he was successively exiled by the King of Chu to the Hanbei and Hunan areas. Finally, the Qin army destroyed Chu Yuan's beloved capital city, Yingdu. The King of Chu abandoned his country and fled in panic. This combination of national and personal disasters was too much for Chu Yuan to bear. And he ended his life by throwing himself into the Milo River. That day was the fifth day of the fifth lunar month. When they heard about this tragedy, the common people of Chu flocked to the bank of the Milo River to mourn. As they paced up and down beside the river, what grieved them most was the thought of Chu Yuan's body being eaten by impious fish and shrimps. Then someone suggested wrapping balls of rice in leaves of the china berry tree and throwing them in the river. This way, the river creatures would be too gorged to bother with the corpse of Chu Yuan. Then, upon hearing this, a man learned in medicine rushed home to fetch jars of real gar liquor and poured them all into the Milo River. And when all this failed to completely remove the people's worries, the medicine man said blandly. The medicinal wine will befuddle the fish. Food, 
dragons and other water creatures, Chu Yuan can rest in peace. In the course of the consolidation of the Chinese people, the dragon boat race of the ancient Yue people gradually became a tradition nationwide. From ancient times, on the fifth day of the fifth lunar month, the same day on which Chu Yuan drowned himself, people have indulged in zongzi and real ga wine, the preservatives of his body, to honor Chu Yuan's integrity and noble character. From this time on, they have held dragon boat races to wash away the grime of the year while eating zongzi and drinking real ga wine to cherish the memory of Chu Yuan. The dragon boat festival has been handed down in this way from generation to generation to this day. The moral of this story the Dragon Boat Festival has more than one origin. It embraces both the traditional customs of the people of southern China and the sentiment of the people of the Central Plain, honoring the upright men of the past. The rich content of folk customs in the Dragon Boat Festival and its long history well qualify it as a festival embodying the nature of the Chinese people. Okay, so now I've read the whole of the English version of this story from beginning to end. Now, Let's look at a particular passage to practice some recitation skills. 好的,现在我已经从头到尾朗诵完这个故事。现在我们来看一看某一个段落来练一练朗诵技巧. He was a man of rare talent in Chu, but his forceful advocacy met with rejection from the Chu aristocracy, and he was successively exiled by the king of Chu to the Hanbei and Hunan areas. Finally, the Qin army destroyed Chu Yuan's beloved capital city, Yingdu. The king of Chu abandoned his country and fled in panic. This combination of national and personal disasters was too much for Chu Yuan to bear, and he ended his life by throwing himself into the Milo River. That day was the fifth day of the fifth lunar month. So in this passage, we're going to look at how to focus on particular words to convey the flow of the story. In the first sentence, we'll emphasize the phrases rare talent and forceful advocacy, because both of these reflect two aspects of Chu Yuan's character, his intelligence and his fearlessness in expressing his mind. Now, in this 特定的私语来表达故事的脉络。在第一句话,我们将着重强调 rare talent和 forceful advocacy,这两个词,因为这两个词反映了屈原的两个性格特点。一个是睿智,第二个就是表达自己思想的勇气。Now, later, we'll want to emphasize the word destroyed because it will create a sense of drama. We'll emphasize it with a strong, forceful tone to get across how devastating this war was. Then,我们要强调,destroyed这个词,因为它会强调戏剧性。我们将用强有力的语气强调这一点,以说明这场战争的破坏性有多大。in the sentence afterwards, both the words fled and panic should be emphasized to convey the fear of the king of Chu. fled her panic As we emphasize panic, we should raise the pitch of our voice and try to express that sense of fear. Finally, we need to convey with our voice Chu Yuan's sense of despair as we read too much for Chu Yuan to bear. 最后,我们要读 too much for Chu Yuan to bear的时候, 我们需要用我们的声音传达 Chu Yuan的绝望感. Okay, let's listen to the whole passage again. 好的, he was a man of rare talent in Chu, but his forceful advocacy met with rejection from the Chu aristocracy, and he was successively exiled by the king of Chu 
to the Hanbei and the Hunan areas. Finally, the Qin army destroyed Chu Yuan's beloved capital city, Yingdu. The king of Chu abandoned his country and fled in panic. This combination of national and personal disasters was too much for Chu Yuan to bear, and he ended his life by throwing himself into the Milor River. That day was the fifth day of the fifth lunar month. 好的，那么今天的课就讲到这里了。希望大家可以不断的练习我刚才跟大家讲解的那个段落。然后练习的时候，不仅仅是练习词汇和单词，也要好好练语气、语调，在什么地方停顿，应该强调什么样的单词。Okay, that's it for today's class. Bye for now.